Hey guys, this is George Jam. Uh, I've got a lot of questions about the brother-in-law build that I posted on that Corsair uh, post for the uh, consumer SSDs as well as in the plotting hardware sheet. So I'm going to answer a few questions. But first thing, I'm going to go through the BIOS because uh, I actually fought with this stupid BIOS uh, for a good hour one day. And I actually went through majority of the settings. This might just be that, you know, I'm on this... Uh, Z490A Prime uh, from ASUS, but I'm on the uh, beta version 2004 up here. You can see the uh, the version here. But, uh, you know, one of the things, so when you're doing the plotting, you want the CPU core frequency to stay as high as it possibly can, as long as it possibly can. So, one, you know, you should definitely enable XMP because that's going to set the DRAM to whatever the happy settings are. So if you haven't enabled XMP, just enable XMP. Uh, first, the next thing you have to do is go to ASUS Multicore Enhancement and just say removed all limits. And this is cool. This actually automatically sets up a bunch of other fields and removes all the power limits. And I'll show you kind of where that is here in a sec. Um, you know, there's lots of other stuff, but the CPU management is where when you set that last setting, it sets all these, see it says auto, but then it says current CPU core cache current limit, 255 amps, long duration package power limit, 495 watts. The one thing I had to do was change this package power time window to 448 seconds. Now this makes sure that it stays at the sustained four. This is a uh, 10900, so this will stay at a sustained 4.6 gigahertz. Um, you know, sustained forever uh, if you can, you know, change this to about 448 seconds while it's plotting. Um, now. The good news is you can kind of have the best of both worlds. If you go here to advanced and you go to CPU power management, um, you can see here, uh, you know, with uh, there's favorite core. So core four and core five can boost up to 5.2 gigahertz, but only when there's two cores active. So most of the time it's, you know, boosting up to five gigahertz, but, uh, you know, the sustained performance over a long period of time is still 4.6. Um, I... I'm interested to test this thing in Windows because in Linux, it, it really just stays at 4.6 sustained. Uh, I've got, um, I'll, I'll show you guys here in a second. I've got uh, quite a bit of uh, data on that for measuring it um, over the last couple of days. So turbo performance, speed step and speed shift enabled. So typically this is, this BIOS is kind of wonky. If you, um, you know, normally I would disable these because you really this the speed step you know, supports different frequency ranges between you know low you know 800 megahertz and 4600 megahertz um and speed shift will kind of do the uh, p states to basically uh, un, you know clock down the cpu and so typically you'd want these uh disabled but for some reason i think on my other asus board with the other earlier bios version it, it likes these disabled but um and this one, if I have these disabled in, in Linux, it sticks at 2.6 gigahertz and just stay, stays there. That's not good. So you need the turbo enabled um, and I actually turn C-States off here. So leave speed shift on, C-States off, thermal monitor enabled, and uh, tau boost disabled. So that's it. I actually left everything else basically uh, stock uh, and that's it. Uh, all right, I'm going to go dig into some of these stats here uh, because I know a lot of people have been asking me. So I just turned this guy on. Um, let's see. I think it's uh, Z493. This is the uh, Asus Z490 with the uh, uh, i9-10900. So um, let's see. Going to hop in here. Uh, I was going to start Grafana again. because I'm gonna show you guys some, some stuff on the dashboard. But before we do this, I was actually using Plotman. Um, and so if you have used Plotman before, I'll probably do another video on, um, you know, exactly how to use Plotman. But if I go to my Chia logs, oops, it's, it's late. So uh, you guys have to forgive me. Um, so here's all the logs from my I'm plotting for a friend for the last couple of days on this build. So uh, I could do LS 2021 427. 
um, and then wc.l, and so 31 plots on the 27th. I've been kind of swapping drives in and out of this system for a couple of days. So let's uh, see. Okay, so its peak was at 36, k equals 32 plots in one day. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably right. So if we go uh, plot man, analyze, 2021, 26 star, should give us the times. So phase one, 11,000 seconds. Uh, the uh, average time for total time is 34,000 seconds. This is So this is with one drive. I just have a, literally a single drive in here. Uh, it's just a single uh, Intel P5510. And it's doing, I think, uh, 14 threads. I guess I can uh, find out here. Cat dot, uh, oops, config plotman. Plotman.yaml. Yeah, so I am doing 14 threads on this, uh, 14 processes on this drive. Um, eight threads, R of eight. Um, yeah, plotting for a friend here. So pretty standard. Uh, this is higher than I pushed the system before. Um, honestly, I don't think it's going to go, you know, if I do 10, uh, 10 versus 14, I think the output is still going to be about the same. So, um, but. Yeah, so you can just see here, you know, I'm doing about 3.6 TIB a day on this uh, 10 core machine. Um, and if I'm doing a lot less threads, I can get, you know, plot times in the 15,000 second kind of range, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I think all that matters is really trying to get the max output of these systems. Um, so what I'm going to do here is see if I can get this Grafana dashboard up and running now. Oh, wrong IP address. That would help. one of these days. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I just have node exporter. Um, let's see if I can bring this down to the window. I can see it. So if I go here and say, let's see, last seven days, you can see uh, I was plotting here a couple of days ago, 426. I think that was when I was told you guys I was that, that was the output for uh, 3.6 TIB a day. So the CPU is basically at 4.6 gigahertz sustained. It just it just stays there with those BIOS settings. Um, you can see the CPU utilization is about 80%. Um, this just using Grafana with Node Explorer. You see, I, I probably powered the system down here to uh, pop the drives out. Um, you can see just only a single drive doing 14 processes, but my IO weight's pretty low. Uh, this is a P5510. It's a good drive. <laughs> uh, average bandwidth, um, max 900. 31 megabytes a second, average 577 megabytes a second read, and 524 megabytes a second writes. This thing's doing with 14 processes, you know, an average of 500 some megabytes per second read and write. Um, yeah, and the DRAMs. This is the no, This is the craziest thing about uh, the latest version. Um, oh, I can't can't see it here in the in my video, but. Um, yeah, the DRAM. Uh, even with 14 threads with 3400 as the uh, B value, yeah, you know, I'm not using, you know, maybe 50% utilization. RAM used 25 uh, gigabytes. So, man, they've they've really done a good job in this latest uh, version of Plotter to reduce the uh, CPU thread uh, load. So, uh, anyways, I'm gonna write up a little bit more about the system. Um, yeah, again, this is. Uh, uh, this system is the uh, the i9 10900 with the uh, uh, 3.84 terabyte P5510. Um, it's just got 64 gigabytes of DRAM. Uh, yeah, it's probably overkill. This thing, I think I've got it about up to four terabytes a day. Uh, you know, totally tuned. I had a couple of SSDs in here earlier, and it was doing a little bit more than it's doing right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna answer some more questions. I'm gonna. My uh, the brother-in-law build. He's got a very similar build, but he's got Windows and he's got uh, Corsair MP600. So I'm going to log into his system right now and see if I can dig around and poke around. But uh, his his is actually doing a little bit better. I think the uh, the uh, 10850K is a slightly better CPU than this uh, i9 uh, 10900, uh, especially in, in Ubuntu. So, all right, guys, thanks.